Today I'm going to show you the NRP cart. This cart is equipped with everything you would need in an emergency. NRP stands for Neonatal Resuscitation Program, all of which you have been through. Now here is your equipment for any given emergency. First thing is first, you need to access the cart. The code is 1354. To gain entry, you would hit clear, 1354, unlock. If you cannot remember that passcode in an emergency, there is always a key hidden under here. Also, there is a quick reference on the top of the NRP cart that will show you your reference chart for your NRP resuscitation protocol, as it is a lot to remember. There is also a checklist. The cart is checked every day, proving that everything is up to speed and has been replaced if anything was used during the day at a delivery. You also have a NICU delivery resuscitation record available to you so that in the case of an actual resuscitation emergency, someone can begin documentation for you on your patient while you are going ahead and proceeding. There is also one thing taped to the top that shows the gestational age, what a baby who is large for gestational age would weigh, and what a baby who is small for that gestational age would weigh to give you a gauge when you're in the delivery. As a quick reference, the drawers are labeled on the outside, stating what is in them. Our first drawer is medications. Anything pertaining to medications when you're in an emergency situation will be in this drawer. We have a locked box that includes the pharmaceuticals. These have been dated with expiration dates so that we know if something needs to be replaced prior to use. It has two red locks on that. During an emergency, you cut those locks to gain access to your medications. In this drawer, you will also have stopcocks. You will have six BD TB size syringes. You will also have six 3 ml syringes. You will also have six 5 ml syringes. Six 10 ml syringes and two 20 ml syringes as the chance for bolus is not as high as the chance for repeated doses of epinephrine or bicarbonate. You will also have blunt fill needles and medication labels so that if you pre-draw up your doses of epinephrine you can label them accordingly if it's an ET endotracheal dose or if it's a PIV dose if you have a line. In the second drawer, we have suction catheters, pulse oximeters, leads, tape, scissors. In this drawer, you will find your limb leads and your small leads and your large leads for your patient. This is in case you need to hook them up to a monitor to get a heart rate specifically. You will also find pulse oximeter and a handheld pulse oximeter reader. This will give you your heart rate and pulse oximetry reading. Sometimes to better secure the pulse oximeter, you will need a soft band. This will also give you a hat for thermal regulation. Also, neo wraps, which are for premature infants and low birth weight infants to help them sustain their temperature. You would wrap the infant in the plastic wrap. You also have these stickers, large and small, to secure to the baby to the radiant warmer so that it can communicate to the bed the temperature of the baby. And you also have extra radiant warmer plugs with the securing device. You will also have NG tubes and suction catheters. You have 5.6 French and an 8 French. These are for deep nasal suctioning or throat suctioning. And G2, you have all sizes. Five French, five French, you have a 6.5 French, and an eight French. This is in case you need to decompress the abdomen. If the abdomen is distended with air from positive pressure ventilation, or if the abdomen comes out flat, you can insert an NG tube 
there's a syringe in here so that you can aspirate what you need to, air, contents, etc. This is a meconium delete aspirator. This is used when you're trying to suction out meconium from a baby that has potentially swallowed meconium. The third drawer is intubation supplies. This is your respiratory therapist's favorite drawer. Inside drawer three, you will have your disposable laryngoscope blade, handle, blade of all sizes. We have size one available, size zero, size double zero, there's, oh, triple zero. Put your blade together with your handle prior to an intubation. Make sure that the light bulb works. Put your blade on your handle if you are anticipating the need for intubation. The light works. The blade is ready. You will also have your endotracheal tubes. By size, you have two of each size, 2.5, 3.0, There's also going to be an intubating stylet. This helps keep the endotracheal tube firm as you help go down to intubate the baby. This helps the plastic not to fold inside the baby's airway. This will keep it straight. It's a little metal hook. Once you're in, pull the stylet out. You also have an extra bulb syringe, a PD cap. This will change colors. It's a CO2 detector and will change colors to let you know that you have been intubated into the lungs. If there's no color change, then you are not in the lungs. You are possibly in the stomach and you need to try again with a fresh ET tube. The stethoscope is here so that you can confirm your placement of your endotracheal tube as well as listen to your lung sounds and your heart sounds of your infant in any case. You will also have an extra set of batteries and an extra light bulb in case your blade and scope needs replacements. Once you've been intubated, this is the securing device needed for your endotracheal tube. There should be one in here. There is also tape as a backup method for temporary purposes. These are your meconium aspirators. If you are anticipating the baby has swallowed meconium, the baby does not come out vigorous or crying, the RT will go down and scope the baby. You will hand them the mech aspirator. They will go down to the baby's vocal cords and then they will put the suction on and suck out any possible meconium that could be past the cords. This is another single-use size 1 intubating laryngeal airway. If you are having problems intubating the traditional way, you can pass this down through the, follow the roof of the mouth with the curve of this and spin it around and fill the cuff with air to give you a temporary airway if you are unable to get one with the traditional endotracheal tube. Also in here you have little suctions this was our old meconium aspirator piece that we would connect. This is a little sucker, mouth or nose, and usually a large, which is yellow. You also have an ABG syringe. If in the event you're doing anything related to your ET tube intubation respiratory wise and your doctor would like an emergent blood gas, there is an ABG syringe present in the respiratory drawer. The purpose of drawer 4 is if you are in an emergency situation and you have to place an emergency UAC umbilical arterial um, catheter or an emergency umbilical venous catheter. All of your supplies is here. You have sterile hats, 
diapers and restraints to restrain the patient during the procedure. The diaper is used to um, swaddle the legs and the restraints are used for the arms. Sterile gloves, as this is a sterile procedure. You will also need your catheters. We provide a two single lumen catheters, one being a size 3.5 French and one being a size 5 French. There's also a dual lumen 3.5 French and a dual lumen 5 French. The doctor will guide you what size to place as he will be the one placing this line. You will also need surgical gown, sterile gown for your doctor, surgical towels to produce a sterile field, and an umbilical arterial catheter tray. This is a disposable tray located in each cart. You will also need sodium chloride. Make sure you check the expiration date. And a hematap, hemostat tap. This is how you get into the line, leaving it to where you can keep getting back more fluid if necessary. During this procedure, you will need to go back to drawer one to get yourself some 3 ml syringes. The 3 ml syringe is the size that you will need in order to do the UAC UVC placement. There are six located in this drawer above. You will also need this handy little bag of supplies necessary for doing your line placement, which includes a scalpel for a fresh cut on the umbilical cord, umbilical tape, which is what you would tie off the cord before you cut with your fresh cut with a scalpel. There is betadine, betadine swabs in there. The doctor will have to betadine the area before inserting the line. There is also scissors, which is gonna help. You're gonna cut your tegaderm to help secure the line once you know you are successfully in. Also your sutures for once the doctor is in, he can suture the line to the umbilicus. There are also umbilical cord clamps in case he needs to clamp the cord at any time during the procedure. This is your fifth and final drawer. This will hold your Neopuff resuscitator in this black case. You will pull your Neopuff out and hook it up to your giraffe. That will give you your blended oxygen source. If the Neopuff is missing its tubings, you're in luck. There's an extra resuscitation T-piece kit in the cart in case that one has been soiled. There is also oxygen tubing so that you can give blow-by if you needed to and you did not have an T-piece resuscitator. There is also a self-inflating bag that you can hook on to your um, giraffe warmer, which comes with different size masks. You should have all size masks available to you in this cart. Creamy, newborn, micro preemie, preemie, newborn. You will also have a nasal cannula ram set up for CPAP or cannula. You will also have an extra suction tubing in order to promote a longer range of suction if you need to reach to the doctor or if you needed another tubing in case the other one was gone or soiled. You will also have a gastro bag this is what you would use in case of gastroschisis or a baby born with part of their organs on the outside of their body. You would simply stick the baby into this plastic bag and pull it up to the armpits and close it until the team can come and get them out for emergency surgery. 